Hello and welcome to my update for October. Uh, it's Claire. This is just going to be a quick video that I'm going to stick together after I've attended the stitching retreat that I'm going on this weekend. So it's Monday night at the moment, which is why the lighting's not so great. But I just wanted to do a quick um, show and tell, I suppose, of the um, gift exchange uh, that I've taken part in and what, what I've done. So I... Because this weekend is going to be Halloween, I chose for my um, gift exchange to stitch this Biscornu. Um, so I, it just felt appropriate as it's Halloween. So this is called A Little Witch and it is by, well the, it says on it Shiny Room, which I've not heard of before. I thought it was a soda stitch, but actually looking closely, um, it's it says www shiny room which is all one word dot com is, is the makers of this one um, and it's a really sweet little pattern um, although it did cause me some issues but then I think all cross stitching seems to cause me issues because if I've not made a mistake then it's not me um, so this is my first Viscornu here is the finished product so I've stitched this on a Jodry fabric of the month which Oh, I've forgotten the name of it at the moment. It escapes me. I'll have to put it in the information box below. Um, so it's a sparkly, I think I get a 28 count um, opalescent fabric um, on that order. Um, and I'm really pleased. It's not perfect, um, but I'm actually really happy with how it's come out. It, I think it could probably do with, a, with some more stuffing in it. It feels a little bit understuffed. But by the time I realised that it needed that, I'd kind of almost... I'd already sewn it up um, so because I thought it would poof out with um, putting the button in the middle but it didn't quite um, so I also have to give a big thank you to Caroline Mazio because I followed her step-by-step -step guide for putting the Biscornu together because um, one of the downsides with this pattern and I can share this with you because it's just the instructions is it does have pictures of how to put a Biscornu together but the instructions um, that there's no instructions in English um, so I had to go searching to find the instructions and I followed the ones that she used for her um, first corner that she put together. Um, so thank you very much for that one. I would recommend um, using, I think it was it's either video, is it 32 or 33? Um, but yeah, it was fabulous and I just, I literally played it as I went through each step and paused it. So I followed her method which is different from this one because um, in that one you put the button on first um, but with a little bit of fabric on the inside to, to give a little bit of protection on both the top and the bottom and then you stitch it all together and then you put more stitches in to kind of get the school new shape which is why um, I haven't changed it because it was only at the very end that I realised that this button is actually upside down because as you can see on the bottom it's shiny side up which is what I was intending but actually you've got the the dull side on this one so I think I've kind of assumed this one is the top um, and then this is the bottom but you know they're both equally nice I do like them and I have to say that the thing that gave me the biggest issues on this was this green border which I think I took out three times um, at some point and these pumpkins as well because um, it was one of those things where you stitch it round and you get to your final corner and it didn't match up and you realize the mistake was kind of made all the way back here um, but yeah so if you want to know what I've done in the month of October, this is it. You're basically looking at it. I've done very little other stitching um, this month. The only other thing that I've kind of, I'm working on, in fact, I've still got my needle attached. Ooh, where's it gone? Somewhere. <laughs> is my label to go on the bag. So I just did a little kind of quilted um, label to, to attach to this. And then I've just purchased, uh, I can't remember what it's called, some... Is it a crocodile or something? I've wanted one for a while just so I can put an eyelet on here and I'll be able to tie it on. So, yeah, and I just used the colours that kind of featured in here. So the blues in the cat's eyes and the orange and the green. So I thought, nice colours. So, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that. But I thought I'm just going to quickly show this now because obviously I'm giving this away this weekend. Um, but I thought I'd also just show you a couple of things that have come in that I've, because, you know, whenever I don't stitch, I shop <laughs> so I have done a bit of shopping this month um, and this is courtesy of um, Stitcherista she showed these on her 
um, channel um, and I've been looking for these uh, I actually bought scroll, scroll can I say that scroll rod covers um, for my millennium frame and this is from the storm born boutique um, which is based in the States so um, and when you purchase from her I purchased the um, scroll rod covers um, she includes a free little needle minder with it which is really cute I like how she's fussy cut it cut the fabric out to get the little snail so I chose that one um, and this is for the millennium frame um, that I have on order so I've ordered um, I think these are bigger 27 inch but I also ordered I'm just going to take them off rather than show you the whole thing um, this is on my current one millennium throne that throne oh millennium frame gosh it's you can tell it's the end of a it's monday and it's the end of the day and i haven't had dinner yet so i'm a bit all over the place but these are the other ones um i ordered from her and the needle minder that came with it just taking it off is this little green one here i think this is called lime daisy so i'm very happy with that so um i ordered the the two sizes of those ones and actually looking at it they probably are quite simple to make so I might give that a go myself but because I didn't I couldn't easily find instructions on how to do it and actually they were so beautiful the stuff that she when I went out looking I thought you know I'm just going to purchase a couple because I do like them so yeah very pleased with those and then the other reason for me making this video is I um, had made a new order um, uh, last week from Etsy and I'll show you where I've purchased from but it comes so beautifully wrapped so I came home to this really pretty envelope waiting on my um, doormat for me today and um, in, ooh, there's something still in there oh yeah. I've even got some freebies that she's included how lovely is that I just thought there's something still in the envelope so she's thrown in these plastic bobbins <laughs> doesn't take much to make me happy does it so some freebies but inside it, there was the, these two um, lovely little packages done up, ready to be opened. So I thought, I'm going to, it looks like it's open, but I haven't. I'll show you what I've ordered. Oh, aren't they pretty? So I've ordered this needle minder. Take it out. Russell, Russell, look out from what you're stitching. There's something to look at here. Um, oh, <laughs> dropped it. So this is from... Um, Floss Candy, Irresistible Stitching. Has it got more on here? Yeah, so there's a website down the bottom there. Ooh, and a coupon for £10. £10. <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? 10% off my next order. So that's my um, needle minder. Put that there. I've got another pretty Russell Russell. Look up again. So this was all part of a set, so you can buy it with it's ice cream themed i think it was a, a one scoop a two scoop or a three scoop so this is this really pretty little needle case with a magnet inside it which i thought would be very handy because um i'm again going away for the stitch retreat so i can put quite a few magnets in there and keep them safe and i really like that that's really pretty and then let's open this one Oh, I see. That's into two. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, I'm pleased with that. I bought um, a Notions case. So again, you can see the ice cream theme. And it's got a tassel ice cream on here. That's the fabric. And it's that peekaboo style. So you'll be able to see what's inside. So there's some of my purchases that I've made today. Um, I'm going to say goodbye and I think next time I might if I've got time on Friday before I go to the stitch retreat I might kind of just do a, um, a quick video of kind of what I'm taking with me because I've no clue I've not really thought this through um, <laughs> um, so I might kind of sort out my stuff I won't have time before to um, doing it um, ahead of Friday morning before I go but it starts at three o'clock and it should only take me about and it, it should well, I'm hoping it take about an hour to get there so I should have time on Friday to potter around and get myself ready for everything. I'm very excited um, to be going and to meeting some other fellow floss tubers and just some other stitchers as well and to have a good weekend of gossiping and it's probably, well hopefully it'll be the most stitching I've got done so far this month. Anyway, speak to you soon, bye.
Hello, um, just giving you a quick view of what the room is like at the retreat. It will be a quick review because the room is really tiny. So I'm standing at the door into the hotel room. Um, this is, it's advertised as a conference centre. So I get the feeling this is kind of used much more during the week for people who are sent by their companies and on conferences or training and this is just somewhere they need to stay. Somebody did mention them. Um, there used to be offices, so it's a converted office, which would explain why it's quite so um, bijou, I think is the word. Um, so we've got um, just a bathroom to my left. You've got a little area here for your clothes. And there's a, it come, does come with an iron and an ironing board. So, you know, it's pretty well equipped. Uh, there's a kettle so that you can have a cup of tea or coffee in the morning. All the rubbish on the side is mine. There's a, a shelf up here, so quite a big shelf, I suppose, if come well equipped. TV, there's a hairdryer in the drawer. I don't have much of a view out my window because I've just got this massive tree. That's all I can see in the morning, but it's quite nice because I do get privacy because that is actually a massive window and without it, I'd probably want blinds. But you can just see a little bit out here. It's kind of on a residential area, so it's, it's fairly quiet um, hotel to stay in outside not particularly quiet inside um, and then the bed is let's see if I can get this in I've made the bed this morning because this is the last morning I'm leaving I'm not making the bed this morning the bed is kind of um, pushed up against the wall um, it is a double bed but it's quite a small double bed but you know it's fine for one I don't think I'd want to be in here as a couple because it's a little bit cozy and if anyone had to get up in the night you'd have to climb over the other person to get out to go to the bathroom so so yeah, that's the, the retreat room, um, having been lived in, there's my handbag, um, so not bad, quite nice, comfortable enough, um, got everything you need, and actually I've spent so little time in here, I've spent most of my time in the stitching room, which is what I came here to do. Um, so it's morning, I think it's about, uh, it's probably about quarter to nine in the morning, so I'm about to go down and have breakfast. Okay, bye. So this is take two because I thought I was filming earlier and I hadn't pressed record. So we missed Bonnie making a purchase at the shop. But this is the Milton Keynes Stitch re um, Retreat set up. So we've got this big room to ourselves and there's about five tables set up here. Uh, this is the first re Stitch Retreat I've been on so I'm led to believe this is quite a small and select group that is here. I think there are 28 of us, although a couple might have already gone home um, at this point. So we've got all the tables set up. There's a table finishing um, finished work you can see in the corner and then we've got Kate um, from Sparkly's here who set up her shop with lots of material and some patterns and we've all done some purchasing um, and if I scan back across the back of the room you can see at the back that there um, is a little table at the back there where there's some scissor fobs and things set up so I've stitched all of that so for those of you okay so say hello Kerry <laughs> And then we're doing a quick reveal now about what floss tubes, floss, floss tubes, even floss tubes, eat when they're at a retreat. So we do a quick pan around the table. I think we are. You've actually appeared on floss tube, haven't you, Richard? So you, you get an honorary guest spot. <laughs> I have, have uh, guest star, yes. Guest star. <laughs> oh my God. Hello. Hello. We've got chicken and potatoes. Is it good? Better than last night. Better than last night. Oh, right, okay. But that's still I, not a high rating. Fried, fried turkey. <laughs> I actually have fried turkey and turnips. Oh, I like that. <laughs> well, I had the turkey, but I didn't have the turnips. Okay. We're going then on to. Money! <laughs> well, that is a bit close. I might go. Eating a money. Well done. Eating a greens. It's so yum. And this is what I'm having. I'm going to do it as well. I think it looks quite nice. To be fair, we're all I'll let you know. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my October 2016 update. Uh, this is going to be a little bit later. It's November the 8th, I think, today. So, um, yeah, this is uh, following the Milton Keynes retreat that I went on to and this video is going to be a bit of a mismatch really because I've got lots of little things so I did some recording when I was at the Milton Keynes retreat which was fantastic I cannot highly recommend or recommend highly I don't know which way around that sentence goes anyway reorder it make sense of it I can't 
I highly recommend it. It was it was fabulous. If you ever get the chance to go on a retreat, then do it because oh, it was just such fun and it's so lovely to meet, you know, other people who share the same passion that you share in life and yeah, just to sit and stitch and to to chat to people and have a look at their work and understand kind of the things that they enjoy, um do a bit of shopping lots of eating lots of eating um and really just lots of laugh laughter yeah i would really highly recommend it it was really great fun so what i'll do is um and why it might take me a little bit longer to upload a video this month is i need to kind of put all the bits and pieces um of my recordings together um it might still end up being a bit of a, a miss a mishmash um of videos um anyway I wanted to start off this segment, I don't know what segment this will be, it might be at the beginning, it might be at the end, in fact it might be somewhere in the middle, who knows. Um, so those of you who watched last month my October update know that I was running a giveaway um, and I just need to start off by saying thank you very much because every single one of you who entered the giveaway, and I had quite a lot of entries, um, not one of you mentioned giveaway or you know, anything in the um, in comments. So fantastic. You really know how to um, follow guidelines. You're, you're very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Compliant. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of uh, quite keen to, to get this sorted and to get these patterns out to people so they can start bringing some joy to your life as they've brought joy to me. So... I haven't actually got the patterns beside me, they're the other side of the room, I've just realised that as I've sat down. So I'm just going to hope that you remember what you're winning. Um, and I'm going to start off with 304. So for 304 I had 32 entries. So I've got, what you're looking at in front of you is my iPad. Um, and I've got random number generator in front of me. And the winner for that one is number 15. So number 15 is Chantelle the Beast. I think that's how you pronounce your name, Chantelle. Well done. Um, what I will do is I will post a comment to you either this evening or tomorrow evening to let you know um, that you've won. So um, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I know how to send private messages now. I finally learned how to do that. So I shall send a private message to you. So that's great. So that was 4304. Let me just check, did you enter the next one? So I'm just going to take your name off of the next one because you've already won. So this next one then is for 797. So let's uh, take this out. Okay, so for 797 I had 40 entrants. 40. So let's generate. And our winner is 15. We just had 15, didn't we? How funny. So for 15, the winner is Life is a Novel. That's a great name, isn't it? So Life is a Novel. Congratulations. Um, I shall send you a private message. 704, Paul. Oh, 704 was definitely the least popular <laughs> of all the selections. I began to feel a bit sorry for it because I was thinking nobody's going to enter to win this one and I love it. <laughs> But no, I did have 13 in the end of this one. So a very select um, group of people going for this one. So we should get a different number from 15. So here you go, 1 to 13. Just thinking, can't quite see it on the screen, can you? Shall I move up? Oh, well, you, you can see, the, you can see the, the result. So generate number 11. And number 11 is a stitch today, the rest tomorrow. Gosh, there's some really good channel names out there, isn't there? So well done, a stitch today, the rest tomorrow. You have won 704. Love those kits. I hope you love them as well. So, aha. So 153 and 3608 were definitely the most popular ones. So, oh yeah, this is still in second place. So for 153, I can't remember what 153 was. I, can't, I don't know if I could... Oh, I think 3608 was Lizzie Kate ones, wasn't it? So 153 was... I don't think I can remember. But how many did I say I had? I had 51. So 51. And generate. 14. It's all very... um. 
middling numbers, isn't it? So the winner of that one is Brandy Stoker. That's Brandy Stoker. Well done. Congratulations. So that shall be winging its way to you. And then finally, 3608. So for 3608, oops, no, don't do that. I had 75. Yeah, so Lizzie Kate, very popular. Are we ready for this one? 53. Gosh, we finally got a high number. 53 is Stephanie A. And I've got Lollybob in brackets. So congratulations to you. You've beat out the big crowd to get that one. So again, if any of you are the winners, um, just I will get in contact with you in the next couple of days via private message. Um, alternative, if you've not heard from me um, and you're watching this to see if you've won, then do feel free to get in contact with me in the comments. But congratulations to all of you and well done. Thank you for taking the patterns off my hands. Um, so let's put this away. You don't need to look at my iPad anymore. I'm surrounded by technology. I've got my iPad, my laptop, my phone. I'm recording on my iPod. <laughs> it's all going on today. I've been um, trying to sort out videos. So, stitching. Um, yeah, not too bad. I, I did do some stitching at the retreat. Probably not as much as I thought I would. Um, I took loads of stuff with me. But um, one of the things I did do, which I was quite pleased was, with, was I made a, um, some progress on my Santa's village. So um, if you've been watching for any period of time, you know this is a, a long-term project that I've had on the go. And I am now on the, uh, hang on, 12, 11, 10th cottage. I can't work that out then, how many I've done. So this is cottage number 10. So um, I finished off what I had to do on cottage number nine. So I, I found the colour to put the, um, runners in on the sled, put all the snowflakes in um, and finish the parcels off. I've restitched the border down here because I used the wrong leaf colour. If, if anyone's doing this, um, just a, an FYI in case you haven't noticed, when you, if you do it in the traditional layout that, it, uh, that they do it in, the designers, the wreath at the bottom alternates so it goes dark light green, light green, and then dark green on the end. And in the middle, it's light green, dark green, dark green, light green. So these are two different greens for the leaves here. And I've done it a couple of times now where I, I kind of refer back to here when I'm stitching, which has meant that I've stitched the leaves in the wrong colour. So I did it on the middle row because I think I just followed the top row and I did it again here. But yeah, I've um, sorted that out. And I was just working on the snowflakes here and I gave up on this snowflake here because this snowflake is wrong. <laughs> I don't know quite where I went wrong. You can kind of see it's a bit lumpy there. Um, so that kind of needs to come out. But this is what I was stitching with on the first night, so the Friday night. And it was probably a bit later than I would normally stitch. And of course, because I was chatting, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, made a mistake. But that's fine. It has had some progress on it. So I think I've just got the... The rest of the snowflakes and the um, trunk that's the word I'm looking for of the tree to do because there's a gingerbread button that goes in here um, and then that leaves me with two cottages to go and there's a little bit in my mind that's going you could finish this for Christmas you could finish this for Christmas but um, no I will not put that kind of pressure on myself because that's usually what makes me give up on something and put it away but yes more progress made on Santa's Village, so I was pleased with that. Other stitching. <clears throat> I've been doing something slightly different, and one of the days this month I spent sewing up my project bag. So I think I... Had I just shown you the material, or had I shown you these sewed up? I can't remember. I might have shown you um, this one. This one my um, Mirabilia lives in. So I am stitching... Find the picture. I'm stitching Elizabeth. Um, I took her away to the retreat with me to work on the Sunday because I thought that would kind of get me back into to some stitching and it did. I'm just going to take the pattern off of the, off the stitching. So this is still on my Millennium frame because it's what I'm working on 
at present. Um, so can I get this all in? Just so, oops, sorry, giving you a knock there. So this is Elizabeth. So um, I had the bow done and this bit of the black on her bodice. Um, and so I filled in some gaps that I had around here and then filled in a bit up here and then all of this purple round here up to this this bit of purple I had in because when I was working on this I was desperate to just get some purple on it because if you look at her dress under here um, it is lots of purples and I was stitching this and it's all blue and black thinking no, I don't remember the dress being blue or black although if you do look at the picture <laughs> there is a lot of blue and black in it but yeah I wanted it's, it's all these lovely purples that I like so yeah I've made um, a bit of progress so I've worked on her um, this week so I suppose since last Sunday when I got back from this the stitching retreat so what's that that's eight days or so so not a huge amount of progress but it's it's quite nice to actually see this progressing for a change and I'm working currently I think just here kind of where her knees would be so I know that where this purple is here is where the the chair edge is here so I'm almost kind of at the far end of the dress so yeah, so I'm happy with the progress on her and I think this Mirabilia will stay out um, probably until the weekend for me to continue working. So Halloween last month I made myself a spooky Halloween project bag so lots of spiders and I picked out the orange and used that for my spotty lining inside. I don't know what's in here, I'll have to have a look. This is what I was storing the... Um, the uh, the scornu in that I made. I, that's my cut through haberdashers, and I think I literally put one strand of back stitch in it, so I won't worry about showing that to you this month. It really hasn't progressed. Uh, I think you've seen, yeah, you've seen that project bag. So I made three other project bags. One, no, four other project bags. So this is another one. So again, I picked out a sewing theme and I picked out the black on this one. It's just got a plain black lining inside. And in here is my kings and queens. But I didn't work on my kings and queens this month, so I won't show you that. I've got this one. So this, was, this fabric I already had in my stash. I included this fabric in a Christmas quilt I made five years ago, I think now. Um, which I love, so I'll be able to bring that out soon. And yeah, so this one's just got a a green lining. What have I got in here? Oh, I have done some work on this one. That's good. So this is one of the projects I worked on this month. Um, and it's this one, the Christmas baubles. Let me see if I can find a better picture. Yep, here you go. So it's this one, which I love. And I love the way how um, they, they finished it as well. So I have made some progress on this one. So here you go. This is how far I've got with this. And this is just on a um, 14 count sparkly Ada that I had um, left over from some Christmas decorations I stitched on this. I think last year was it I did? I think it might be last year. Um, so yeah, so I was hoping to kind of get this done and I'd kind of worked out how many baubles I would need to stitch a day in the month of October to get it finished and I was kind of doing okay and on track and I got to here and I've realised that I'm one stitch off and um, so this next stitch that's here should touch the purple bow so it's all a complete circle but it's one stitch off and so I stop there I think the thread might be hanging on the back yep the thread is still hanging on the back because I couldn't decide I thought I'd check where I'd gone wrong and I got all the way back down to here and I still hadn't found um, where I was a stitch out and there's no way I'm going to pick, unpick kind of a quarter of the, well not quite a quarter but almost a quarter of the, the stitching. So I'm just trying to, I was, I was just trying to figure out how I could kind of correct it, whether I could just move the whole bauble over and whether I might need to make some adjust adjustments to the other baubles going on. I don't think it will be a huge thing because actually with the back stitching, I think by the time that goes in, it, it kind of, I can kind of bring it back. So there's back stitching on the bow and back stitching around the bauble. So I think it might be okay. Um, 
but I kind of it, it made my brain hurt to think about it so I put it away for that that and I will come back to it and again there's a that that nagging thing in my voice that says you could finish it by Christmas but I'm not putting that pressure on myself because actually it's not that long for Christmas somebody told is it 46 sleeps or something ridiculous like that yes so it's hung around for a couple of years what's this this is in uh what date is this november 2014 so yeah it's been around for a couple of years exactly november 2014 it's november 2016 so it will not harm it if it takes another year to finish although i'd like to think i'd finish it before november next year but who knows and then my final project bag i made was this one so cotton reels um i've got quite a lot of this fabric in my stash and this one I just put a plain yellow with, what's inside? Oh, I did do some work on this. This is this is what I worked on originally, I think, at the retreat. Uh, sorry, it's a big bit of fabric. Oh gosh. <laughs> I might just have to kind of try and position it on the table because I'm not doing a very good job of it here. So um, I worked on finishing the snow fun because I had all of the snow across the bottom to do. I think I had the scarf to do, the mittens, I had to, and all the snowflakes, and I had to move this tree. I think I had to move it one stitch that way um, so that the tree trunk wasn't kind of floating in midair. Um, so yeah, so I finished another one of those. That's four out of the six done. Um, and I thought this would be a good one to work on because uh, kind of just white, simple stitches just needed to kind of fill in the gaps really and not really any counting to it although I think by the time I'd done this one and then I moved on to the um, Santa's village I was a bit burnt out with white snow and white stitching um, and so I did start the border down here but because I'd kind of was I think yeah this is what I worked on on the Friday night so I was still working on this on the Saturday and I kind of just, I wanted to move on to something else. So um, I had thought I'd at least get the border in for the next one. So I only had the filling in to do, but I didn't quite get it done. I think that's about half the border filled in. But yeah, a bit of progress on that one. So again, another one that's nearing the finish line. There's quite a few of these that are approaching the finish line, which is uh, quite exciting really. Yeah, so I think that's everything I stitched on. So just a couple of other things to show you. I need to pick out all the... This is well loved already, you see. So so we I participated in the um, gift exchange at the retreat. So it was to stitch a pin cushion or um, a biscornu. And it was a kind of a done on a secret... Uh, What's the word we're describing? Basically, you, you gave in your gift um, and you got a raffle ticket in return. And then if you participated, you pulled a raffle ticket and then you picked the corresponding um, item um, out. If that makes sense in any way whatsoever. I should say it's about, what was it? Almost half past eight on Tuesday evening. So it's been a long day at work. It's been a long week, even though it's only Tuesday does not bode well for the rest of the week. Yeah, so I won this one, and isn't it pretty? And I love the colours on it. I, this blue is absolutely gorgeous, but it's also got that really lovely contrast with the yellows and oranges in it. So I don't actually know who stitched this for me, but it's beautiful. Um, and I don't know where they got the pattern from. But So I can't help you if you're looking at this and think you like it, but it is lovely. And it's um, got a lovely soft felt on the back of it, and it's really nicely stuffed. Um, and as you can tell by all the threads that's hanging over it, it's also been put to work already. So thank you very much, whoever gifted that one to me. So I did do some purchasing because if you may well be aware, October is my birthday month. So I did have some money to spend. I don't think I realised quite how many bits I bought, but some of it was a real bargain. So I'm just going to share some bits with you here. So at the retreat... Um, there was um, Kate Sparkley's from Sparkley's Fabric. So she came along with some fabric and she bought some patterns as well. So we all spent many happy hours pouring through all of the fabric and looking at all the patterns and trying to match things up. So great time was had by all. But I picked up uh, this one, so Garden Party, which I've loved for ages. I think I think it's the lanterns that, that originally did it for me, but I've also seen 
quite a few people stitching the dress and the detail especially in this dress I just think is absolutely beautiful so um, I'm happy to add that one to my collection. I also picked up, now is this Zinnia? Okay. Yes it is Zinnia. Is that how you say your name? Zinnia? Zinnia? I don't entirely know but um, again as soon as this one was released and oh, the one that came out at the same time of her flying on the, the broomstick I absolutely love both of those and I knew that I would buy them at some point it was just it was more a question of when not if um, and I've managed to persuade Bonnie at Purple Frog Stitching to also purchase this and um, hopefully we'll be doing a bit of a stitch along um, next year uh, and starting on this one but I absolutely love it that kind of Angeloni, Angelina Jolie um, leg that she's got showing there fabulous I also had already ordered um, it's not Gwen is it Electra so I've got Gwen in my stash and now I also have Electra so I I think these are lovely I love these um, what collection the bewixing picture oh gosh bewixing oh my goodness I can't say that word bewitching pixies English is hard people <laughs> um, yeah I love the oranges in this one so I'm quite I really cannot wait to get these ones started I think one of uh, well um, Zinnia Zin Zin will be my next Nora start um, and that may well be my kind of January the 1st and then when I get her done I think my plan for next year is that I will have a Nora Corbett on the go at all times because I've got so many that I love and I want to get started um, and these ones are a bit, bit uh, bigger no they're not bigger they're smaller than the <clears throat> excuse me the Mirabilia ladies so hopefully there'll be a bit of a quicker stitch um, this one I have seen somebody working on this on Facebook and posting the updates and it's absolutely beautiful I love it I, I'd i seen it a few times and you know I wasn't particularly fussed by it but having seen it stitched it is stunning so this one and um, Electra I ordered from Oh, I can't remember. I think Electra came from Cassacina. That's how they pronounce it. And I think this one came from so and so. Yeah. I've also been collecting the Prairie Schooler months. So this month I, or last month I added August, uh, September, October and December and this December one is one of the new ones so it's I don't like it it's all flimsy papery stuff I love the pattern but all of the others I've got are the these ones nice and substantial so this one just feels a bit like ugh, ugh, can't be bothered so yeah no pattern on the back so yeah so I've got that the only one I'm now missing is November so again I'm hoping next year to start start stitching this series this one I picked up at the retreat. This is the first ink circles pattern that I've um, owned, and this is called that. I'll let, I, I can't, I'm struggling with English this evening. I'm not even going to attempt French today. Um, but yeah, I picked this up but, um, again from Sparkly's. And looking at this, I'm thinking, you know, either a really beautiful hand dyed fabric um, and kind of a neutral one color floss, or a neutral fabric and then stitching it in um, a hand dyed floss so hmm, not sure I'm going to start it but I love it and I love the ones that I've seen completed of this so this one I picked up from um, Cassacina as well and I bought this completely enabled by Gem Stitch absolutely love it this is similar to the um, it's by the same people that make the uh, the cakes patisseries pattern as well so there's the designers down there if anyone's looking for it and again all sewing themed this one absolutely love it um, and I like I just like some of the lo the um, logos is that the right word I don't think logos is the right word the little um, standalone designs are quite pretty so like this thimble with the flowers is so pretty um, yeah really like that one and then this little pile here, um, I went to, uh, on my birthday, I went to, I suppose it's an LNS, but it's a bit of a, it's, it's really a craft store than an, more than an LNS. But they had these two big tubs of patterns, which were, they're all reduced anyway. 
and um, they were now all half the marked price that they were in the box. So I had a very happy um, bit of time just flicking through all of these patterns and pulling out ones that I thought that I would like. So I picked up this little stitches. So this is this a Nora or a Mirabilia? Oh, by Nora Corbett. Um, Mirabilia designs. But I thought this was a big, a handy little one to have in my stash if ever I wanted to do um, a birth sampler for somebody. And so yeah, so this was priced at four ninety nine, but was two pound fifty. This one is a Rico Designs, and I like this. Um, just these lovely little robins are so beautiful. Now these ones, they do sell the the table runners and things for you to stitch on, and some of the the elements are printed onto the cloth. But I thought um, so. This would have been two ninety, but it was one pound forty five. Um, I really just like the robin for the same reason. I also liked. It's, this one's got hedgehogs, but I also really like this owl. So same price again, one forty-five. I picked up a Just Nan, um, Follow the Needle, and this came complete with the um, embellishment pack on this one. I, it hasn't got the price on, but I have I have a feeling it was something silly like £3 or, or yeah, silly price, silly price. So, you know, had to buy it. And I really like it. I love the colours on this. It's really delicate. And those... Roses across the middle are really pretty. So I picked that up. I got my first Cricut collection, Alphabet. Um, so again, half price. So half what's marked on here. And I like how they've done all these different um, smalls with the, using the letters. I think that's really clever. So that, I think, I thought this would, I might not stitch the alphabet. <coughs> Excuse me, but I thought this would be really handy. Look, look Kay. I found a pansy. Um, so this is a DMC um, multicolored, multicolor pansies. So this is priced at 40p. So I paid 20p for this. And so I couldn't pass it by and I thought these are really beautiful little pansies. So I like this one. And then I purchased my first Teresa Wensler. Wensler, is that how you say it? Um, and again, really silly price on this one. I've bought this knowing that it may never be stitched. I don't know. I've been watching um, Pyrex Stitchers, Claire, in Australia stitching this. And that border is absolutely stunning. I mean, again, it's one of those ones where it looks so much better stitched than it does on the picture. I just don't think you can do can do it justice looking at the picture. Um, and I've had a look at the blended threads list. I mean, how long is that? I don't know if I can show you. Oh, here you go. How's about this for intimidation? Look, look at that list of symbols and colours and how many of those are blended. So all of them that you can see with the, this, they're all blended symbols. I mean, it was worth just picking this pattern up because I came home and I had a cup of tea and I was just laughing as I read this and looked at it. So, you know, round of applause to Claire for, for actually stitching it. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe one day... Um, she might actually get stitched, 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 or even stitched. Yeah, so that was um, everything I'd picked up. I was just going to quickly, sh oh yes, not quite. I did buy my first piece of fabric from Sparkly's, and I'm going to take it out of the packet. So be such beautiful fabrics they have there. But look at this one. This is beautiful. I love it. Can I get it in? This is called Dusk. So it starts off this beautiful kind of dark blue at the top, fades to light blue, and then you get a pink, and then, well, it's a pinky purple, and then it fades out to a really light pink at the bottom. It's bleaching it kind of white, but this is definitely pink in real life. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning. So I bought quite a nice size of that one, and it is called Dusk. Um, and this is an 18 by 27, 28 count jasmine, and it's a really beautiful soft um, fabric. So yeah, so I love that one. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to stitch on it. I kind of thought it, it a mirabilia, maybe one of the petal fairies would sit on this one quite ni nicely. But I'm quite happy just to hang the fabric up because it's so beautiful. Um, Cross stitch magazines this month. I've just picked out a couple of things that I liked. So this advent calendar. Here, I thought it was really pretty, very simple. So you've got kind of the solid stitching in the middle and then all the, the numbers around the outside. But they've also 
I do like that the thing that cross stitch will do. They often show you how to take some of the pattern and put into a small. So they've done this little pin cushion down here. So this is in the November cross cross stitch collection. Um, there's a polar bear Jane um, Netley Mayhew in here, which I know a lot of people are fans of. And it comes with this massive fold out chart, mega even, mega fold out chart um, of the cut through house. And then this other one um, caught my eye and this is by Emma, I can't remember what her surname is, but I know she's done lots of patterns like this one. And so this is a Christmas, um, Christmas pudding version. Uh, so I thought I'd... I'd I just really like it. I think the colours in it are, are really lovely in this one. What's it called? It's called Festive Fair. And you'll see that's the name of the designer. I don't know how you pronounce that. And that is in... This one. Cross Stitcher. So that's November number 311. So there's a few nice little festive ones up. These are quite cute down here as well. I don't think I'd ever stitch them, but they're quite cute. So yeah, that's everything I think for this month. Did I stitch on anything else? Oh, actually, do you know, I just thought there is one more thing that I've done. Stitching wise, throw this in at the end. I have been doing some work on my, um, I can't remember, deck chairs, that's what it's called. Um, so I've done all of the kind of the confetti flowers down at the front. So I am basically, you can see there's a line of yellow here where it ends. 